a Brazilian NGO that has been working to support indigenous rights since the 1970s. The Acre fica na Amazônia, na região amazônica. Como vocês podem ver aqui, os dados, é, nós temos né, a população do Brasil e também a população né, na região amazônica, que corresponde mais ou menos a 20% né, do total da população brasileira. Um, here, um, Acre, the state where they come from, is the westernmost uh, state in the Brazilian Amazon. In this slide you have some numbers, both general Brazil and also specific for the entire Amazon. Também você pode observar aqui a porcentagem, né, com relação às áreas naturais protegidas na Amazônia, em relação ao Brasil. E também nós temos né, eh, informações com relação aos territórios indígenas já demarcados. She calls special attention to the numbers of two distinctive types of protected areas. The before last one is what we called natural protected areas, and the last one is indigenous territories. Eh, na Amazônia Brasileira, nós temos quase todas as terras indígenas já estão reconhecidas oficialmente. In the Brazilian Amazon, almost all of the indigenous territories have been legally, officially recognized. Esse processo iniciou no final da década de 70, onde houve um movimento internacional, que foi o momento para a luta né, pela demarcação dos territórios indígenas. The process of recognition of most of these territories started in the early 70s and it was a national process. Vocês podem ver aqui a Panamazônia, que é o Brasil e outros países amazônicos também. As cores alaranjadas são as terras indígenas e as cores verdes são unidades de conservação. E nessa parte que está marcada é o Acre. This map shows the entire Amazon. There are nine countries. Uh, the orange areas are the indigenous territories. The green areas are the, the, the other category of protected areas. And this blue mark is the state of Acre, where they come from. E nós temos aí o mapa do Acre. É, nós temos da cor verde escuro e clara, que são as terras indígenas. A verde escuro é as, os territórios onde a Comissão Pro Índio trabalha. So this is the map of Acre. All of the demarcations in green in the territory are recognized indigenous territories. The darker shade of green are the territories where they work directly. É, O Acre também faz fronteira com Peru e Bolívia e tem também territórios indígenas do lado Peru do mesmo povo. As you can see, Acre borders both Peru and Bolivia, and several territories on the Brazilian side are territories that continue into the Peruvian side, and it is the same indigenous peoples on both sides of the border. Desde 2000, o ano 2000, é, o sistema de proteção de áreas protegidas no Acre também considera né, as terras indígenas dentro do sistema. E atualmente né, soma quase 50% do território do Acre, juntando unidades de conservação com terras indígenas. Os territórios indígenas são handled by the same state agency in Acre that handles the other indigenous territories and currently if you take all of the protected areas in Acre it adds up to nearly 50% of the state area. Então, agora eu vou falar sobre a política nacional de gestão de território ambiental, né, de terras indígenas, que é a PNGAT, né? Esse foi através de um decreto presidencial que foi assinado em 2012. Isso só foi possível também graças né, a territórios que estavam reconhecidos. 
É, foi uma articulação também a nível nacional do movimento indígena e indigenista, junto com organizações do governo responsáveis né, para que essa política ela se crie. When talking about indigenous territories in Brazil today, the most relevant policy is this one. We call it Penegachi. It's the Brazilian policy for territorial and environmental management specific to indigenous territories. It was established through presidential decree in 2012, and it was only possible because all of civil society, all of several organizations within civil society and government agencies came, came together to have it uh, established. Uh, essa política tem sete eixos. Né? O primeiro eixo né, que ele tem a ver com a conservação dos territórios e dos recursos naturais. This policy has seven main pillars. The first pillar is the one that handles um, territorial management of indigenous territories. <laughs> okay. Conservation of indigenous territories. E também, né, outro eixo que é importante, que é a governança com participação indígena. Another very relevant pillar is the one that talks about governance with indigenous participation. E pautada na legislação de 1988, onde garante né, o território para os povos indígenas poderem desenvolver suas culturas, seus modos próprios de organização e línguas. And this is based on the the Constitution of 1988, which establishes the rights of indigenous peoples to manage their own territories according to their own culture and tradition. O funcionamento dessa política tem um conselho gestor que é formado por organizações indígenas, indigenistas e organizações do governo, cuja secretaria executiva é a Fundação Nacional do Índio, órgão responsável pelas políticas indigenistas. Policy has a managing council, which is where you have representatives from various different stakeholder groups, and the government agency that is in charge of Benegati is the is called Funai. It's a Brazilian institution that handles only indigenous rights. Também, uh, né, se iniciou em 2000 a nível do estado do Acre, o processo de mapeamento dos territórios indígenas que resultou nos planos de gestão territorial ambiental, que foram os primeiros planos no Brasil né, que surgiram. The, the main model for the management of indigenous territories in Brazil is this one. We call it PGTA. They started, the development of these models started in Acre in the early 2000s. É, por meio dos mapeamentos participativos, né, as comunidades né, começaram a sistematizar e fazer também o diagnóstico socioambiental. The development of these plans often starts with a zoning, a mapping of the territory. É, os planos de gestão né, são ferramentas né, para a gestão que orientam os projetos comunitários sustentáveis. These plans are um, a guiding tool for communities, and they establish the community's goals in terms of management for the territory. Também orienta as políticas locais e regionais. They also guide local level policy. Através da rede de cooperação amazônica, né, que congrega diversas instituições indígenas e indigenistas, é, também se fortaleceram para elaborar documentos e poder influenciar a nível nacional essa política da PNGAT. We have another partner in Brazil. It's the network of Amazonian cooperation. And through the work, CPI is a member of that network. And through the work carried out at that level, they've been able to write several policy documents that have been used to influence policy at the national level. Atualmente, esses planos de gestão orientam os programas de governos né, que estão de, é, destinados né, às terras indígenas. E eu fecho aqui é, a minha fala que todos esses avanços atualmente se encontram ameaçados. She's saying that these plans are today the, what the government has in terms of guidelines when dealing with indigenous peoples in their territories. And she would like to finish her talk here today by saying that all of this that you've 
heard about. All of these acquired rights, they're currently <coughs> under threat. É, porque atualmente o Congresso Brasileiro é conformado por donos de grandes territórios né, que trabalham com o cultivo e que são inimigos dos povos indígenas. O governo brasileiro tem, a uma grande parte, aberto e muito forte ligações com o agrobusiness. E um, eles são inimigos abertos dos povos indígenas e do movimento indígena. Movement. Onde estão querendo, eh, atualmente, querer levar a exploração de mineração né, e também disputando o território com povos indígenas que ainda estão lutando pela titulação do seu território. Há uh, uma grande threat da indústria de mineração e os povos indígenas estão se encontram competindo por território com esses drivers de deforestação. Então, para fechar, é, é necessário né, recorrer né, a nível internacional para poder fazer essa denúncia com relação ao governo brasileiro que está fazendo com os territórios. Obrigado. Um, they see the need now to go to the international level and tell the world about what the Brazilian government has been doing recently, all this retrocess on the acquired rights. Thank you very much. Now, uh, Nilsson will be talking a little bit more in detail about what a management plan, the PGTA, is and how they are made without a department. Once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Então, é, primeiramente, eu gostaria de dizer que eu sou um agente agroflorestal indígena, né, formado pela Comissão Plante do Acre no Brasil. First, he would like to say that he is what we call an agroforestry agent, indigenous agroforestry agent, and he got his training from CPI, the organization Maria Luisa works for. Então, é, a Comissão Plante do Acre trabalha com formação de jovem adulto para trabalhar na gestão territorial e ambiental das suas terras e do seu entorno. A Comissão Plante do Acre trabalha com a capacidade de um, young adults e adultos e dá eles as habilidades que precisam para manejar seu território, ambientalmente manejar seu território. Para fazer é, melhor a gestão é, do nosso território, usando nossos recursos naturais de uma forma sustentável para garantir é, o futuro da nova geração. They learn how to better manage their natural resources so the future generations will also have access to them. Porque a gente se preocupa com a nossa riqueza natural, né, que são as caças, a pesca, o rio, os recursos naturais. They're very worried about their natural wealth, the, the things they hunt, the fish, porque quanto mais o número de população vai aumentando, mais espaço a gente vai ocupando e mais uso do recurso natural a gente vai fazendo. With a growing population within the territory, they occupy ever more space and utilize ever more resources. Então, é, diante do nosso trabalho, nós construímos é, o plano de gestão nosso, que é um plano de vida também. They have, based on all of these challenges, developed their management plan, which they also call a life plan. E esse plano, ela se tornou em uma ferramenta muito importante para o nosso trabalho. This plan is a very important tool for our work. Então, é, nós sabemos que nós é, temos que cuidar da floresta, cuidar do meio ambiente e defender né, esse planeta Terra que está doente no, nesse mundo global. We know that we have to take care of our territory and even more than that, we have to take care of the planet, which is sick. Porque para nós que vivemos na floresta, né, a verdadeira riqueza é a gente ter uma vida de qualidade, uma água de qualidade e liberdade do que a gente quer. For us who live in the forest, true wealth is having a good life and having the freedom to do as we please. 
É, com as mudanças climáticas e o aquecimento global, está né, acontecendo muitas coisas no mundo. With climate change and global warming, there are a lot of things happening in the world. Então nós somos verdadeiro defensor da natureza, né? We are the true guardians of the rainforest. Que estamos fazendo um trabalho para o nosso povo, para a Amazônia e para a humanidade nesse planeta. We're working for our people, for the Amazon and for the planet. Trabalhamos com a implantação do sistema agroflorestal, que é um plantio consorciado com várias espécies de frutíferas. They implement as part of their plan agroforestry systems, which are mixed cultures, uh, both perennials and what's the perennial annual crops. Trabalhamos com recuperação de área degradada, com criação de animais silvestres, né? They they have some animals that they raise, and uh, they also work with um, degraded areas, recovering degraded areas. É, tudo isso é para garantir a soberania alimentar do nosso povo. All of this is done to in order to guarantee the food sovereignty of their people. E também estamos é, envolvendo nossos vizinhos do entorno no trabalho que estamos fazendo, né? They are also working very hard to go beyond their territory and involve the neighboring communities or other conservation units. Porque da onde eu venho, tem terras indígenas que fica entre dois municípios, tem terra indígena que fica na fronteira com outro país, no caso do Peru. There are indigenous territories that are between two cities, there are indigenous territories that are on the border with Peru. E a prospecção de petróleo, narcotráfico, a exploração de madeira ilegal é muito forte na faixa de fronteira. On the border area, there are several threats from narcotraffic, from oil, from wood, um, illegal logging. Então é uma preocupação nossa, né? Então nós, como agente agroflorestal, fazemos esse trabalho né? de vigilância, fiscalização e conscientização do povo. Part of his work as an agroforestry agent is also to do this physical monitoring of the territory against threats and also raising awareness amongst the people. Trabalhamos também com com escultura, que é reaproveitamento de madeira, né? A gente transforma em uma escultura mitológica. They also work with sculptures using uh, recycling wood. Trabalhamos com controle de lixo, né, orgânico e não orgânico na aldeia. They also learn how to handle the garbage, organic and not, within the village. É, trabalhamos com manejo e criação de, de, de animais silvestres, no caso do tracajá, apenas nativos sem ferrão. They work with honey and another species that I have no idea how to <laughs> é, Então, fazemos todo esse trabalho, né? É, porque a nossa cultura já é trabalhar com manejo e o cuidado do meio ambiente. It is in their culture to take care of the environment. E com com esse novo conhecimento que estamos adquirindo, adquirindo, está fortalecendo cada vez mais o trabalho que estamos fazendo. And this new knowledge that they got through this capacity building work is just strengthening their already normal work. É uma categoria que não existia no estado do Acre, né? Ela começou em 1996 e agora o nosso grande desafio é lutar pelo reconhecimento dessa categoria como uma categoria profissional na área da gestão territorial ambiental das terras indígenas. So this category, the indigenous agroforestry agent, is from 1996, but they are still fighting, it's a complicated story, but they are still fighting for the government to officially recognize this as a category that the government would then support. E nós temos uma associação que representa essa categoria, né, que é a MAIAC, Associação do Movimento dos Agentes Agroforestal de Natuaca. They have an association to represent this category. It's called Amayaki. Então, é com muito amor e carinho, sobretudo com muito respeito, que a gente está compartilhando um pouco da nossa experiência com vocês. It is with a lot of care and above all with a lot of respect that we are here sharing a little bit of our experience with you. Nós somos diferentes em cultura porque falamos língua diferente, temos culinária diferente, mas estamos buscando um único propósito. We are different in that we speak different languages, we eat different food, but we're all looking for the same goal. Que é melhorar a qualidade de, da, da, de vida da humanidade nesse planeta. 
which is to improve the quality of life of humanity and of the planet. Então vamos estar junto para a gente poder defender esse planeta Terra e viver com paz e harmonia. Let's get together to defend planet Earth and live in peace and harmony. Harmony. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. For the very last uh, presentation from the Brazilian team, I will talk a little bit about another thing that we do in Brazil in relation to these PGTAs and to the policy work, which is the work which is uh, somewhat new, but it's going quite well, about uh, the development and use of consultation protocols made by indigenous peoples. I also have to clarify that uh, I'm not the most qualified to be giving this presentation. Our partners should be here, but uh, we can bring them to Myanmar next year, maybe. So, why have we started working with consultation protocols? Brazil has uh, accept, recognized ILO 169, but we know that in practice, there have been a lot of developments that to a certain extent, disrespect, not to a certain extent, completely disrespect the rights of indigenous peoples in managing their own territories. So the people have come together and they have decided to write this guideline of sorts on how they should be approached, how they would like their rights to be respected, the time that they need to make decisions. And we have started developing these consultation protocols, which are done by indigenous peoples themselves, often with the support of an NGO like the, the one Maria Luisa works for. These documents, we don't have that many of them as of yet, but uh, they, in general terms, they provide guidelines, like the ones I mentioned. What should you consult indigenous peoples on? How? When? The, they, they, they vary a little bit in their form, but the, the main message is this. They're also a very good instrument for policy and advocacy work. The idea is that they should be used by all interactions, by all stakeholders in interaction with indigenous territories. I would also like, I should have opened with that maybe. In Brazil, these have been done mostly to be used by the government in its various agencies. But we believe that they are just, um, they are a tool to organize the dialogue between any indigenous peoples and the outside world. And this opens a lot of possibilities. You could ideally use them for any kind of interaction when the cultures are that different. These are two of the protocols we already have uh, in place. I think we have at least three more. And in the next five-year period, our new program at RFN will be developing a lot of them. The first one I would like to present very briefly is the Xingu Protocol. Xingu is a very large indigenous territory in the Brazilian Amazon. It is known worldwide because of the Belo Monte Dam. I don't know if you got news of that here in Myanmar, but that's a very good example of not using the protocol. And this was done after that. Like, let's try to put this on paper and organize this better so it will never happen again. It's a very brief protocol. I have it digital if anybody wants to look at it. It's in Portuguese, but very visual. It establishes um, who in the community should be consulted, what kinds of things they should be consulted about, when they would like to be consulted. And here, what's key is that they want to be consulted way before the decision has been made. It gives, very, it gives a script for consultation. It's like a 12-step thing. It's very interesting. First you do this, and then you do that. And this is how our community works, and this is how we need to discuss these kinds of initiatives. It also ends with a very <coughs> interesting and very threatening map of the threats to the Xingu indigenous territory. It's everything from mining to logging to oil to cattle to soy. Another protocol, the very first one in Brazil, this one was one of my projects. It's the YMP Indigenous Peoples. 
indigenous people, sorry, if Acre that you just saw is on this end of the Amazon, the YMP are on the far eastern end. They finalized their um, protocol in 2014. It is a lot more extensive than the Shingu one, but it talks about the same thing. The difference is that the YMP have written a lot about their culture, presenting themselves to the world. They have very graphic rules for what a meeting should look like, who should be in the meeting from government and also from the YMP people. <coughs> and here we have a great success story. The first consultation by government agencies, according to the protocol, happened earlier this year, in May. <coughs> they were consulted about this very complicated story, but they were consulted by two government agencies, one of which is the state level forestry secretary in the state of Amapá, where they're in. This is just, it's in Portuguese, but it's just an explanation. So this is three phases of what a meeting with the YMP should look like. Here they establish um, first what the government and the YMP should meet on, who should participate in the objective of that meeting, a second phase, it's really interesting, it's a series of internal meetings that they feel that they need in order to discuss what was discussed in the previous meeting. And then a final meeting where they would make their agreements. This can take a very long time, a time that government agencies are not used to and are sometimes not willing to respect. But now the YMP have a document that says this is how we want it. Thank you very much. This is just a very brief introduction on the work about consultation protocols. We're free to answer uh, questions about all three presentations, should you have them.